Hello and welcome back everybody to the POC E3 The Battle of Central Europe Season 3 that is of course It's going to be a two game series for the group stage Commando Minus vs House of Gamers We, or I at least, I'm from Hefla TV I'm Coucher and well The English coverage for you will be provided by Hefla TV on both channels On this one as well as Hefla TV HP2 which is currently going on Unless they've already ended their games With Lions vs Album Sheet I would want to say it is But in any case, this tournament, we wouldn't even be here without the awesome sponsors for it. Steel Series, Hitbox, eBattle, as well of course, Vinotech as well. So huge shout out to them for making this tournament happen, of course, and the admins as well, just putting in hard work, getting in the teams, whatnot, the qualifiers, and so on and so forth. But here, it's game number two, House of Gamers, can they come back? If you start the group stage with a 2-0 loss, it's pretty damn devastating for you, to be honest. It's not the worst case scenario, just because, well, you're gonna have to play every single team twice. So, it's two two-game series between each team. So, one group lasts for two days, each team plays three series a day. So, even if you lose one series 2-0, it's not the end of the world, but still, you would want to have that tie, just to have a little bit of a buffer before you actually fall out, you definitely want to get to the playoffs because there's a lot of money in the line, I mean the first place already gets $21,000 whereas I think it was like free... Ranger. 3k and 2k? Like, well, I think it's maybe like 5k for second and 3k for third, something like that but the first place gets like the majority of it, that's, that's what I know, first place is definitely 21,000 but now, looking at the graph, Brewmaster and Razor banned out by Commander, whereas Death Prophet and Viper banned out by House of Gamers in return. But Draw Ranger and Visage, the start for Commander. It's definitely a strong combination, but is it really worth it just going for it straight off? Whereas Tide Hunter was the first pick for House of Gamers. Definitely a good hero to have. I mean, Ravage just such a devastating ultimate, it really is. So, we'll see how well they can use it. House of Gamers, they still have the second pick. Uh, Viper isn't available, unfortunately, but you can go for Ogre Magi, you can go for Sky of Mage if you want to. What do they? I mean, Ranger Spirit, if they don't go for it themselves, they might want to ban it out. I do approve of really any hero that House of Gamers, if they're going to go for something that closes the distance, just jumps on the Draw Ranger, just gets next to him, because that's where the Draw Ranger is weakest. If you're literally next to him, even the Frost Arrows won't be enough for him to just try to orb walk and just kite you around. And not only that, if you're close enough to him, his uh, marksmanship will also be halved. But oh, House of Games going for an IO second pick. So what are we going to see together with the IO? That's a little bit weird to say the least. But Ancient Spirit was banned by House of Gamers. Can't say I'm all that surprised. I mean, throw Precision Aura plus the Vengeance Aura. Everybody would do a just sick amount of damage, at least every ranged hero. But now Commander Minus, banning out the Slark. Definitely a nice pick, because Slark is one of those heroes, as I mentioned. Just gets in your face completely and makes it so that you can't really do anything at all. Whereas, well, Batrider was the secondary ban from House of Gamers. You don't want your IO to get dragged out, you really don't want anybody to get dragged out, so it's... All in all, a solid ban. It, it's not really like House of Gamers' first two pickups specific at all. Especially, I mean, you have a, Or rather, Commander Minus' throw visage specific. Although, the focus fire would be real. If you just catch anybody with the lasso, you could easily focus fire them down with... Uh, maybe the familiars even helping out, soul assumptions and whatnot. But Commander Minus going for a puck once again. Definitely worked out in the first game for them. Had a pretty good time in... Just with the KDA to kill death assist as well as everything else. Oh man, the price pool in euros is like wow. It, it, in dollars, it, it looks better. It's the numbers are round when you just put them to dollars. So yeah, I guess it's like twenty one thousand dollars for first price, six thousand for second, and three thousand for third. I guess that would make sense. Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. <laughs> but in any case, guys, Ember Spirit was the second man for Commander Minus. And House of Gamers now, what do they pick up? Do they go for the partner of the IO? Nope, going for the Witch Doctor at the moment. Which, in a sense, can partner up with the IO as well. I mean, 
it, yes, it's not going to be like the core with the IO, but they synergize because wood restoration into the IO means that whoever is tethered to the IO also gets healed at the same time. And now Commander Mine is going for the Ogre once again. So they're gonna have the Bloodlust to buff up the Draw Ranger. At least they don't have extra damage, but attack speed will be good enough. Ogre, of course, uh, cannot benefit himself from the Precision Aura. So Puck and Visions are gonna be the main keys for that. But for Commander, what is going to be their last pick? That's the question for me. Can they go for any ranged hero as, as the offlaner, for example? They could send Puck offlane. Of course, and send somebody else mid lane, or they could go for like a gyro safe lane with throw being in the mid lane, depending on what house of gamers are going to run themselves in the mid. There's just so many factors to account into this. I would love to see a Wind Ranger, just overall a really fun hero to watch. To be honest, I did see one already today, but it didn't work out all that well. But oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! House of gamers, Necrophos, Io combination. That thing is deadly it's sickening how much damage that combination just can pump out by itself and how much sustain i mean i guess the damage maybe isn't all that high but the sustain will definitely be there i mean you just cannot ignore that or if you ignore it it's gonna be your downfall most likely so Commander Minus, they do have a decent amount of burst of course, and even the gust, the draw range of silence might play a huge part in this. Just to make sure that for example you don't get uh, Reaper Scythe. That's like one part already. So... What are they gonna go for next? M the fifth band to come from Commander Minus. Oh, what could House of Gamers go for? They have their offlaner. Necrophos can be either in the safe lane, maybe an aggressive tri lane if they really want to. Or just be in the mid lane. So they're a little bit flexible there. But I think Commander Miners are looking for a mid laner. I would expect that to come out at least. So what could they go for? I guess something like an invoker is still available, although they don't have the best setup for the Sun Strikes. You could go for Vex as well, I guess. Just be really speedy. Go for the Orchid to try to deal with the buck Puck. M might be worth it for them. They can of course go for like massive heals. Just go for Omni Knight, although I wouldn't advise it. Against physical damage it would be nice with the Guardian Angel. Even getting the immunity onto anybody. Just Im uh, use the magic immunity onto Necrophos. The Repel. And just then the Guardian Angel to follow and nobody can do anything at all. But we'll see what they go for actually, because so far they, they're just waiting things out. Finally the Lycan does get banned. So Commander Minus used it themselves in the first game, but they do not want to go up against it just to be on the safe side. Plus of course, Lycan of course with that shapeshift would be pretty damn fast and would be able to just get under the side of Throw Ranger pretty damn fast as well. And would help out in death polling a little bit, because House of Gamers, for example, if they get that early mech, if they go for it at all on the Necrophos, they can start death polling with Tidehunter having the Ravage as well, just go as 5 man, go for towers, and just bring them down, Lycan would have helped out with the tower pushing for sure, with the Howl, with the Wolves, maybe even early Necro books, but Commander Minus, they do go for the Chirocopter in the end, so it's going to be another range here of course to benefit from the Precision Aura, lots of AoE damage with the Flak Cannon, and that means that they have two cores to take it in the late game, or two just right clicking cores that is, of course. Necrophos with the Agony Scepter can completely shut down one hero. Just if you get the kill with the Reaper Scythe on him, he won't have buyback. 30 seconds additional respawn timer as well. So you'll get completely, completely screwed over. Just nothing you can do at all. Oh well. Just a second. So, just, sorry guys, some admin talk, admin group talk, blah blah, whatnot. So, fifth pick for House of Gamers, what the hell is it gonna be? Can they go for some more sustain? Of course, I mentioned the Omni Knight previously, but that would mean that their late game is just actually really damn weak, because even if they do survive some of the fight, when the Guardian Angel, when the Repel ends, 
what are you gonna do next just nothing so they're gonna have to go for some kind of hardcore I mean Spectre is available I guess although Inspector might not be enough but oh House of Games going for a Dragon Knight I have to say I kind of like that pick just a tanky hero all in all can go for some additional push as well help House of, House of Gamers actually bring down objectives and rather mid game oriented as well here so should be an interesting game hopefully gonna see a little bit more action than in game number one just for my sake just so I wouldn't go crazy with just solo casting but which whatever the teams want really whatever tickles their fancy so we can see almost everybody has picked up their hero only one player the witch doctor to pick it up hopefully no issues this time around Dota 2 network it, it's all fine we're friends with Dota 2 network right everybody is we love it we love the network all is fine and all is well and all will be well until the end of time so no pauses yet as well there was a small pause but it got unpaused almost immediately and to introduce the lineups to you guys for the second game of this series for the BOCE the Battle of Central Europe season 3 Malam will be playing the Necrophos heading towards the safe lane at the moment leaving slash strike on the Dragon Knight heading towards the mid lane with a moment supporting on the IO going for a straight off bottle by the looks of it Faith in Strangers once again playing the Witch Doctor Leaving Akira on the offlane Tide Hunter, but for K minus on the dire side, Insolent is the Draw Ranger this time. Leaving Pure Evil on the Visage with Kikoni on the Puck as Poison is on the Ogre, and the last one will be Hawkeye on the Chirocopter. And looks like they're running dual lanes again. I have to say, I think their last dual lane was a little bit stronger, but it might work out, especially if the IO is actually in the mid lane with the Dragon Knight. That means it's going to be a dual versus dual lane on the bottom, so. It's gonna be fine, plus Ignite together with a Rocket Barrage might just be enough to get some kills in uh, on the bottom lane if it's actually 2 versus 2. But that all will remain to be seen. What? <laughs> okay, never mind. I'm not going to get distracted by other stuff, I'm just going to keep on casting and when this game ends I'm going to just read up on everything else that has happened but oh the haste rune comes out, Hawkeye, he picks it up as well, he has the rocket barrage, Ignite already activated, they're going to have to spread out, Hawkeye could have just kept running straight and I still think he could have gone for it, would have been a little bit risky I guess since Ogre Machi wouldn't have really been able to follow up but I mean this haste room was just an opportunity gifted by the gods themselves but opportunity not taken. Of course, yeah, like I say, it would have been a little bit risky, but if you had managed to get it, it would have been just excellent. I mean, it's just straight up first plot, if it's in a dual lane versus dual lane situation, you couldn't really ask for a better start. Poison, just, he's out there to deny, maybe get some last hits for himself, Charcopter, doesn't really have the best range, I mean, it's pretty horrible to be honest even, whereas Witch Doctor, 600, 550 on Malam as well, on the Necrophos. So, Charcopter and Ogre Mage don't have anything on that really. But they do have the kill potential if they get close enough. Maybe if the creep wave is pushing out in their favor at the right time. So they can get some additional damage from the creeps themselves. I mean, especially if Hawkeye gets level 2 and goes for a homing missile. Might make things a little bit easier. Just ignite into homing missile into fire blast. With rocket barrage being there at the same time. I make it sound pretty easy to blast, I don't die. But Akira, he's farming up top lane. He's already level 2 as well. Uh, Insolent this early on can't really do too much to a Tidehunter because Tidehunter, well, he just doesn't care, he's a boss. Level 1 in Crack and Shell, not the best, no Stout Shield either, but these days Stout Shield is actually more rare than I think it maybe should be. Yeah, Shadowcopter took a lot of damage just from the Pouncing uh, Paralyzing Cask, as well as some right clicks coming out. Malam didn't even need to go for the Death Pulse because you want to hold on to it. At least this early on, I mean, level 1, 125 mana already, but doesn't give all that much. And look at this, Heartstopper aura skilled up. Didn't go for the Sadist. So, as Poison hangs around, as Gyrocopter hangs around, they're just gonna gradually lose HP at all times. But now, Hawkeye, he wanted to go for a rune. They're using the Tether as well. Paralysis Cast not gonna bounce, but they still might get the kill. Maladic comes out, Malam gets the right click, as was the Death Pulse following. One more right click came in from the IO, and Witch Doctor gets the kill with the Maladic. Damage. So first blood, House of Gamers, starting off a little bit better than last time around. Uh, 
damage. Akira's still getting some nice XP. That's one of the downsides if you're going for a dual offlane like this. You're just running the risk that they're gonna get too much in poison. I don't know why he ran in this close, but his clarity was only halfway done. I guess he has extra of them. But he didn't get the value out of the clarity. There was no need for him to run in. He didn't gain anything from it. But the courier might get sniped a moment. Trying to go for it. Courier hiding in the trees. I think they saw Ayo being there. Seven more seconds for it to be in ranged form. For them to have it. Kikoni in the meantime. Proton slash strike pretty low I guess. Oh yeah he wanted the bottle crow. A moment. He's still waiting for the Oh courier never mind. He has the speed charge. Upgraded as well. Ayo just doesn't have enough damage, and now suddenly they're gonna go for Kikoni, there's the tether slow as well, they already used the dragon tail, can he get out, illusion of phase shift, oh my freaking gosh, last strike, he needs a little bit more mana, can they chase Kikoni down, jukes, them jukes, with spirits connect, and now slash strike, he got enough, from a moment's bottle for the breathe fire, he gets the kill, pure evil TP's in, but too little, too late, should've come in immediately, maybe didn't have a TP, not too sure about that, but well, that happened. So 2-0 for House of Gamers. Definitely just the dream star for them almost, I guess. They have to take command of this game early on. They cannot allow the draw as well as the Chirocopter to just farm up. And well, Chirocopter, I guess he isn't farming up that much. 6 and 3 only compared to a 14 and 7 Necrophos. So this dual offlane, not working out as they expected as Pure Evil. Gonna see a moment stacking up the Ancients. Doesn't even succeed with the stack. Pull them like one second too early. Slash strike mid lane, dropping low as well, but he's gonna bottle crow now. Or at least he probably is. A moment, gonna do the same, so they might double bottle crow here. Arcane boots, finished on Akira, might be in some trouble. Frost arrows comes out, pure evil comes in as well, has the level 2 soul assumption. He needs it, there's the grave chill, additional slows man, Tide Hunter, as if he wasn't slow enough. Anchor smash, not even gonna come out, soul assumption, easy kill. Double damage was there on pure evil as well, grave chill, stealing the slow, the, the movement speed as well as the attack speed of course. So... Nice kill, they finally bring down the Tide Hunter, who was getting too much out of the offlane, to be honest. Quite a lot of farm as well. Homing Missile will chase down Malam, but they themselves weren't following up, so it makes a little difference. Just, I guess Malam is like, well, he used mana, so I'm fine with that. 124 level 1 Homing Missile. It's Chirocopter, I mean, he has a decent health pool, and oh, Maledict gets the kill onto Visage in the meantime. Witch Doctor just came in, Paralyzing Cask, Maledict. Easy solo kill, bottom lane, they want to go for Malam again, this time around they might even get it, Rocket Barrage is level 2, I think they're gonna get it as well, Death Pulse, can he activate it, Rocket Barrage is there, he went for the Death Pulse, but there's the homing missile, it should be enough to get the kill, healing salve though, oh my god, he stays alive, beautiful healing salve, exactly what he needed, it would have been pretty close otherwise though, I think it might not have been enough anyway, but it would have been so damn close in any case, so nice escape there, they were unable to chase him down, they ignite, Needed just a little bit more slow from that. As illusory or Oh, slash strike. Can I get the stun onto Kikoni? No. Oh, phase shift. Is it enough? Grave chill is there as well. No, never mind. Slash strike. Last strike click got the kill, but the return from Pure Evil is there. He hits level 5 all of a sudden. Cannot go for a moment, unfortunately, as in the meantime, Faith in Strangers with Akira. They get the kill on the Draw Ranger. So a 2 for 1. Yes, they lose the Dragon Knight, but they get 2 cores for 1. It's just simple maths. A moment, gonna bottle up an illusion rune as well. Gonna run into pure evil. Can he get the soul assumption charges? Grave chill, of course, helped out a little bit, but oh, beautifully done, Ayo. Sent is one one of his il illusions at least towards the mid lane and tether to it. So really well done. So six and two, almost the exact opposite. Akira might be in some trouble. Never mind. Throw Ranger, he's in trouble in return. Not enough mana for the paralyzing cast though. He was missing seven or eight mana. Anchor Smash gonna miss as well, so that means that even the level 3 Maledict will not be enough. And suddenly Grave Chill is there, Hawkeye comes in as well. They're gonna... Uh, homing Missile, Faith in Strangers, Akira just goes for the TP out. Slow on to Faith in Strangers. That range was sick for the slow, for the Frost attack to be honest, but... Yeah, he's gonna die. That was a little bit unfortunate for the Witch Doctor, just lacking like 7 or 8 mana for the Paralyzing Cask. With the Paralyzing Cask, they, they needed so little extra to bring down the draw ranger. They really did. Mid lane though. They're gonna chase down Slasher Strike. Slash Strike. And yeah, Fire Blast comes out as well. So that's the kill. Nvidia notifying me that there are new drivers for my video card. That's all well and good. Kikoni. Wow, wow, the Wisp Spirits. They do quite a lot of damage, don't they? Level 3 already. He's not level 6 himself, but being level 5, 7 minutes in, it's pretty good. Malam, 
22, 23 and 15. So not farming up that well ever since his support left him. Which Doctor has been roaming around quite a lot. Of course most of it has succeeded as well. But K minus. Commander minus. They got the two kills in return. It was 6 and 2 just like 30 seconds ago. Slash strike. Pops his ultimate. He wants to go for the tier 1. Should be able to bring it down I think with the corrosive breath. Another creep, creep wave coming in as well. Siege creep will be kept alive. So yeah it's definitely going to be tier 1. I don't think the smoke will arrive in time. Kikoni doesn't have a blink trigger. Isn't anywhere close to it on the puck even. Dream Coil also on cooldown still. And Haystrom gonna be bottled up for a moment. Not Slash Strike. But they want to go for another tower. They're gonna get the stun on the Faithfins Rangers. There's the Paralyzing Cast. Never mind. He's holding onto it. He knew it wouldn't bounce. He had to use it in the end anyway. Homing Missile comes through. That's the kill. But Pure Evil. Gonna lose his life in return. So it's a one for one. Uh, familiars. Not gonna die to the Anchor Smash. But still dropping low. So another one for one. Support for support. Slash Strike comes in with the first... Uh, pre uh, corrosive breath right click Elder Dragon form is pretty good in just taking down towers But speaking of taking down towers Insolent being level 8 Has the precision aura at level 3 Marksmanship as well Wanted to go for the tier 1 but it got glyphed so This tier 1 does survive At least for now Whereas Witch Doctor coming in to soak up some XP Ayo at the moment is already level 6 So they have to relocate at the ready even bringing the Witch Doctor might be enough to just set the kill up almost anywhere. If there's like one plus one hero around. And Malam, he has a Gloves of Ace. Is he going for a Hand of Midas Min? I guess he might be going for one. Just to make sure you can get the levels, get the Aghanim Scepter at a decent time still. Because Midas doesn't set it back that far, given you can fight, but... Malam, oh, never mind. I thought they want to go in. And they, wow, just a mini stun. There's the relocate coming in as well. Ogre Magi. Well, the Reaper Scythe did nothing but just stun him. Well, 1.5 seconds just was enough for the relocate to arrive. Ravage, of course, popped as well. So they popped two ultimates. Three ultimates, excuse me. And they're going for a moment. There's the silence, the slow as well. Soul Assumption to get the kill. Pure Evil gets it with the familiar drop downs used as well. So, more or less, they traded the support for support. But, House of Gamers also blew three ultimates for that. Oh, that, that that was extremely weird, if you ask me. They might get the tower still. So that's going to be the trade-off, but most likely, Throw Ranger with the Visage and the Familiars are going to get the tower in return. So yeah, tier 1 goes down. Cliff still available for Commander Minus. Stun, whoa, Titan. What's level, what level is the stun? Level 3 already. Hawkeye, no, why? Why did you run in Paralyzing Cast? Gonna bounce as well. Is he going to go back to Hawkeye? Never mind. Slash Strike came in from the backstab. Now Insolent. Oh, beautiful triple Dream Coil with the Silence following on to 2. Maybe even free there. And now Slash Strike, he's on the run. Charcopter, he even pulled back for this. They need to ignite, they need anything as all oh, the cooter, not gonna get sniped. Slash Strike. Got the Dragon Tail onto poison, so still no ignite coming out. He should be able to outrun everybody else because, well, now especially with the tether coming through. But still three heroes down. Charcopter buyback ended up doing nothing. Just wasted some time, wasted gold, but you don't lose all that much this early on anyway. But what a turnaround, what a dream coil. They still keep on going, a moment might be in trouble. Call now, not gonna connect on everybody's slash strike. Runs in, wants to go for insolent, the breathe fire isn't enough. Oh, rocket barrage, it's only level 2 slash strike, pretty tanky. And there's the death ward with the maledic. They get the kill on the Chiro. Faith in Stranger Man, he's playing pretty damn well this game. Urn of Shadows negative, want to kick on it. Oh, but they relocate out, what? Oh, Ayo brought slash strike with him. I don't know what that was all about, but he's gonna return soon enough. As I oh, he gets the kill onto the Draw Ranger, so I guess it was worth it. Maybe should have just left Dragon Knight to be. Could have gotten the kill on Puck as well. Who escapes with 55 HP? So 11 to 9 now. Hard to say who has a clear advantage, but looking at the network chart, I guess in network at least House of Gamers are slightly ahead. They have destroyed two towers after all as well. So yeah, up and down it goes. Oh my god. We're only 12 minutes in and it's gone just up and down so many so often already 1500 network lead for house of gamers well as it updates 2500 xp almost the same story but 18800 rather not 18 800 so xp not that big of a difference and well the net worth mostly towers as well i guess it, they're only sitting one tower ahead although a moment trying to push down the top at the same time the tier one is pretty low there as well and we have a pause Hopefully not take too long, just I'm gonna drink some water at the same time now. Oh god. 
God bless water, man. God bless water. Okay. Everybody's ready and look at this. Roshan is already going on. No life steal on insulin. Sometimes you go for more with mass control ranger if you want to go for this. But I guess with visage helping out, they might get it anyway. Unfortunately, precision aura has been used already. So they can't use it for the additional damage on familiars. But with them dropping down, getting the stacks of damage reset, they're still gonna get it anyway. Or are they slash that comes in with the haste rune? He's gonna get casted to the high ground. Are you kidding me? That cast. Holy freaking crap. Age is picked up on insult, but there's nowhere to run Ravage. Completely whiffed though. There's the, the cooldown as well. A moment. He goes down to the soul assumption. What is this fight? Akira came in, but he got multi strike. He's gonna go down on the tide hunter. And slash strike still on the high ground. And he's going for the TP out now. Familiar drop downs. Yes, they're gonna stop it. Pure evil, just free summon the familiars just to get the drop down. So three heroes down. Yes, they lose the ages almost immediately, but boy, was that worth it. And Minus is now finished on Necrophos. Not the fastest one, 13 minutes in, but it can still work out. But wow, what a fight. That Ravage, he even had a blink dagger for that, but completely failed. Puck now has a blink dagger of his own as well. And they're going to get a tier 1 tower up off of this most likely I mean familiars bro who is level 11 level 2 marksmanship he's hitting pretty damn hard I mean if you're about 14 minutes into the game and you're hitting for like exactly 220 damage that's a lot plus you're attacking pretty fast as well and 16 armor so physical damage has li little effect on you really just what a crazy game this was man or is <laughs> not was Hawkeye, of course, still struggling on the Chirocopter, so his, wow, his last in net worth in their team. That's how bad this Chirocopter is doing, I mean, pfft. Visage is going to be more of a carry than this Chirocopter is by this point. So, all that's going well for Commando Minus, at least. House of Gamers are going to have to be happy about being able to shut down this Chirocopter pretty hard, but, well, he has been shut down, but he still has extra 50 damage, so that's like an extra damage item almost randomly. And they're going for another push, they don't stop. They're going for the tier 2 as well and they might even be able to do it. Now the glyph comes out, so they're going to back off for now, but... House of Gamers, they're going for a tier 2 push of their own, so it might just be a trade. Kikoni has the blink dagger if he wants to go in. Is he going for a Midas as well now, just to take it to the late game? I, it might be, I guess, a little bit weird, but... I've seen weirder things happen. I mean, they, they definitely have some late game power, but then I would have liked to see Chirocopter going for one as well, already. But they're backing off, they don't get the tier 2, whereas Command of Minus, they got it. Oh, the Dream Call onto Faith in Strangers. There's the call down to follow, even Homing Missile will chase down Faith in Strangers. Illusory Orb and... Oh, uh, no escape from there. Oh, Akira, he got the blink out. But 11 to 13, looking at the graphs again. It's now, at least the network is actually in Commando Minus's favor, about 1k XP, 3 and a half almost. So looking pretty good considering they were at a decent advantage to begin with, losing quite a lot of kills, but oh they're gonna get Hawkeye, poor poor Chirocopter. Blink, gosh, a moment comes in, Slash Strike just had the last remaining seconds of the Elder Dragon form, but the Relocate goes in Malam. He's not gonna get soloed up just because Relocate came in and there's the Reaper Scythe, 60 seconds on the sidelines. The familiars were almost enough as Akira gets one down, the second one, no, resummon. So they don't get the kill on Necrophos, although he did almost die. I'm not too sure if he got the multicast on Ogre, I think he did. But just not quite enough, you needed one. If the Visage himself had been present, would have been easy kill with the Soul Assumption. And Ayo is going for a mech as well now. Actually, pretty damn close to it, only needs that Puckler. Which is about 600 gold away. Wow, so not, not six. Yeah, well, I guess 600 was right, more or less. Malam, they still want to go. Kikoini, he's around. But does he solo have enough? Blink, illusion rubber as well. Dream coin needs to be used for this. And yeah, he's gonna use it. There's the kill. Man, just Necrophos, he isn't as tanky as you would expect. Didn't uh, trade swap to strength as well in, in time. And that's gonna be hand of mine. It is finished for Puck now. So, it's, it's still a weird option, but you can go for sheep after this, maybe Aghanim Scepter once again, Aghanim Scepter Refresher like last game. 
Or if not, you can even build right click. You can just go for like Eye of Skadi if you want to. You have the extra damage from Precision Aura. Slow people down, kite them around. It's something you can ponder on. Shadowcopter just going for those drums, man. I, I really would have liked to see him going for Midas as well, just kind of catch up Midas. But Puck is number one in network. Throw Ranger number two. And well, Malam, he's going for straight of Agony Scepter, but still needs three parts of it. Uh, Armlet was also finished on Dragon Knight, so he's even tankier and harder to bring down now with some nice just Armlet toggling. At least uh, potentially is. Let's say it like that. Io pretty damn close still to his mech as well. Getting closer by every single with every single creep he kills. And well, game has slowed down a little bit. Lots of gamers. They really haven't gotten any proper ravages off in fights. At least not yet. But 4 staff will be finished on Tide Hunter, so it's gonna have a little bit extra mobility, which might just be enough for them to get the kills. Or get a proper ravage off. Oh, Kikoni. Yeah, he's gonna jump onto a moment. There's the Silence Illusion waiting for it a little bit. And it's gonna get Toish now. Never mind, it's not. He broke the Dream Coil, got hit, and Kikoni. He even jaunted away, and oh, he's in so much trouble now. He's gonna go down for sure. Reaper Scythe. That was not worth it. You're on the sidelines for 80 seconds plus a mega kill streak. Fed away to Malam's Necrophos. That was just a fail. That there's no way around this man. 800 gold or 600 to the Necrophos, a little bit to the tide as well. 1.7k AXP spread between them. All well and good to kill get the kill like that on Twyo, but you need to escape as well. And the smoke is there, Malam, he's acting as bait. Will he be perfect bait? Now Hawkeye, he's on the run. Can he escape? Oh, poor, poor Chirocopter. If he gets caught again, uh, probably gonna be Blink. Gash, Gash comes out. No tether coming yet. Oh, there's the cooldown as well. The Gust comes through. Relocate used, but to the wrong direction. Hawkeye, oh, the Paralyzing Cast goes to the Familiars. Back to Hawkeye. Back to the Familiars and... Visage himself. Familiars, of course, they don't care because they don't get stunned, but... Wow. Well, that, that was still pretty funny. And... Oh, no. Anchor Smash, man. It just kills the Familiars. Brings them down to half HP immediately. A moment. Can they get a kill on him? They're not even gonna try. Just ignite on the creeps and... Just slow push it. Now Blink Dagger picked up on Malum. He went for point booster, I guess just some extra raw, not raw stats, but raw HP and mana, not that bad. So, Blink there, definitely nice positional, positioning wise. Pure evil, Agony Setter was finished a little bit before already. Mech finished on IO as well. Excellent burst heal to come from them, whereas Poison, Ogre Mage, he's going for a mech surprisingly enough. But mech is, or can be key against a Necrophos. Just when, when you think the Reaper Scythe is going to get the kill, you get the mech, get the burst heal and you're fine. As a moment, he has the Invis rune, Paralyzing Cask won't bounce to anything. They won't get that they're slow or anything like that either. So, 14 to 15 the kill score. Drow still farming up pretty well, but they're not taking any objectives at the moment. He does have a SNY as well, going for the PKB next, has a Ogre Club for it. They still are ahead by 2k net worth, about... 22, 2300 and gold as well. And oh, they relocate onto Insel. Go for the TP out immediately. Reaper Scythe though, cancels the TP. No kill, but the Gash comes out. Can he outrun them? He is pretty speedy, but Malam blinks. Whoa, never mind. There's a Kira with the Blink Gash. So they do get the kill. Nicely done. The relocate just coming into play right there. And K minus. They, they aren't accomplishing all that much. Kiko, Kikoni in the meantime. Gonna finish up the Evil Scepter after the Hand of Midas. So th that's good, of course. That item is always good. You can dodge uh, ravages and whatnot with that. And you're a little bit faster on your feet as well if you have it finished. So that's always a good point. It's gonna just eat away the B creep, not gonna leave the small one here. And TP the top lane to push out the lane. Looks like Slash Strike. He's going for the AC next on the Dragon Knight. 
Just go for mass armor as a mal. I'm gonna get slow down, multicastered up as well. That was such a fast kill. Precision aura, not even necessary for the visage familiars. They are level 2. Agony was buffed as well. So, nice kill. Necrophos though, he's number 2 in Network now. He has surpassed the Draw Ranger. So, Draw Ranger not farming up as fast as would be required of him. Maybe try to sneak another Roshan and then go with the Ages. I just feel like, well, maybe they feel a little bit too secure in their own late game, although Chirocopter isn't getting much of anything. Still, plus 52 damage, of course, coming out uh, from the Precision Aura. Bloodlust will also buff them up even further. It's only level 1, but give it time and it's going to be level 4 at some point. And they are going for Roshan. Oh, Dragon Knight scouts it out with an illusion of the, his. So, illusion runes also have their purposes. Just scouting the best one of them. Tidehunter going for a straight off, off Refresher Orb by the looks of it. And K minus, they're hanging around Roche Pit. They were expecting House of Gamers maybe to try to come and contest Roshan, I think. God, I'm almost out of water. Need my just beer mark for water. But it was in the wash. So, in any case, enough about water. Insolent, did it just go for a third Wraith Band or had it been in his stash for quite some time already? I hope it had been there for longer, but I don't know exactly. Well, he's going for a BKB, so that's a nice choice. I mean, there's so much magical coming out from House of Gamers that it's almost a necessity to go for BKB if you don't want to get Reaper, Scythe or Ravage, for example. You don't have an IO on your own team to just bail you out if things get really, really, really bad. 1.8k on him, so he's not all that far away. He still needs another 1,000 gold though, about 900 now. Akira has that Oblivion Staff. Working towards the Refresher Orb. Slash Strike is about... Whoa, that calculation is hard. About 4,000 4, gold away. On our right, I think it was like 3,000 gold. He does purchase the Plate Mail though, so he needs the... 2100 Hyperstone as well as the 1300 recipe, which is 3.4. So he needs another yeah, 22.9k gold. So 3k was pretty accurate. And Roshan is going on at the same time as we speak. But House of Gamers, will they be fast enough? They are smoked up. They have the Elder Dragon form. Roshan is dropping low, but it's not low enough. There's the Blink Rage. Finally connects properly. Catches two. There's the Maladic to follow as well. Paralyzing cast. They're going to go down as two. Relocate comes in. Buyback immediately. But Reaper Scythe. Oh, what? Did he dodge it? That was a sick animation, but Faith in Strangers is going to lose his life to Hawkeye. Poison comes in from the side, Roshan still up, they relocate back in. He just brought back one of the core slash strike. He's doing solo Roshan, he doesn't care, he's going to pick up Aegis, I think. Yes, it is. Yes, in the meantime, Akira got chased down. If only Poison and Hawkeye had just gone into the Roche pit immediately. They're going to get slash strike, or are they? Can he TP out? Nope, Fire Blast to stop it. So, that's Aegis popped. But they could have killed the Dragon Knight, they could have killed Roshan themselves, had they not chased down the Tide Hunter. So Greed got punished right here. But they get the kill on Dragon Knight, so all is well in that regard. But no Aegis for themselves. And whoa, Kikoni wanted to go for the kill, but... Oh, he has the Yule Scepter. With the Silence and the Illusion Rub, he's gonna have enough. So he gets the kill on Tide Hunter in the end anyway. That's Aghanim Scepter still finished on Necrophos because he was pushing out another lane at the time. Or rather, he escaped the fight to push out another lane. And that Reaper Scythe was used, but somehow Puck got the Ethereal Chaunt out from there. That was really weird to see. Usually Reaper Scythe just stuns you for the duration, but I don't know. He got out, so kudos to the Puck. Negrif was still number one in Network, though, although he hasn't had the greatest of games. But last hit wise, he's number two, so not that shabby at all. Gyrocopter will have his own BKB soonish as well, just needs the recipe. He's actually. Wow, insolent. Oh, yeah, he bought back, so. Still doesn't have his own BKB there. SNY hasn't done him much good at all in this game. Just 9k network, even the Tide Hunter has surpassed him. K minus, unless they start farming up a little bit better, they need. To just get objectives, they need to get kills. If they were farming just at a crazy rate with all of them, it would be fine. Maybe if they had like free hand of Midas's on Dro, Chiro, and the Puck. At least Visage is rather farmed as well. So that's gonna make up a little bit. Although it's not like IO doesn't have anything. I mean, he has 1.8k on top of the mech. 
Magic Wand, Pazzy, and Tranquil Boots. So he's only about a 500 difference with Visage, about 700 with the Chirocopter. And of course, with the Tether, the heal from the Death Pulse is real. And that's gonna be Perseverance finished up for the Tide Hunter as well. Only needs the recipe, another 1500 gold to get the Refresher Aura finished and double Ravage. Well, let's just say it like that, a Commanda Minus. They want to, they need to finish up the BKBs before the double Ravage comes out. They should be able to do that, of course. We have 1000 missing for Insolent, as well as about 600 missing for Chirocopter. But you can never know, you can never know with such things. Also, of gamers, do they wait for that item to come out? Do they wait for the Refresher Orb? Or I guess if they see an opportunity, they can just... Go on to just a second. Go on to oh god, I know what I wanted to say. Other things distract me. I get distracted way too easy at times. So yeah, I don't know what I was about to say. Who who cares, man? Who cares? I wouldn't have said anything smart anyway, right, guys? Right. Ah, oh, hur hur hur. <laughs> but eighteen to nineteen game. Well, I, I guess I can't say there ha haven't been any kills at all or anything. But it's been a little bit on the slow side, nonetheless. Kikoni farming up his own jungle. Going for a Hex next, by the looks of it. Has the ultimate orb for it. Hex would make just perfect sense. Hex, all in all, really, almost any hero who can get Hex. It's going to be a good item. In there. It's never like, oh, Hex is such a bad item. Yes, in some cases there might be better alternatives for certain heroes, but Hex is never going to be completely useless. And Hawkeye, about 300 gold away now from his Repressor Orb. Black Cannon, not even used, just goes for the Rocket Barrage, kills off the Mud Column first, brings down the other creeps pretty low as well. So PKBs are going to be crucial, does... Well, Insolent, about 200 away from his own as well. So they're gonna have it at about the same time, although both farming up the jungle, so stealing farm from each other a little, little bit. Tide Hunter though, wow god, he's so damn close, 400 gold, make it like 100 after this, all 200, got the low roll on the dragon. 1.9k on to a moment, he hasn't farmed up too much, neither has faith in strangers. Of course, they don't have the space to farm as well because everybody is taking away everything from them. Everything. But BKBs are finished for both now, I think. Yes. BKB. Never mind. Troll Angel doesn't have it, but after this ancient stack, he's gonna have his own BKB as well. No Mask of Madness, though. So, no, just crazy attack speed. Especially if somebody gets next to him. Which they probably will. I mean, they're gonna send somebody at least to try to halve the marksmanship bonus. So Insolent has his own BKB now. Are they ready to fight? Do they wait for another Roshan and risk it being stolen or risk it just risk going into another fight like they had there? As Kikoni, he's he's farming up pretty fast based on the puck. He's number two in net worth, but the hand of Midas Necrophos still surpasses him. He even has a Ghost Scepter. So with the Ghost Scepter. Should feel pretty safe in his ability to just stay alive in the fights for a long enough duration to get his ultimate off. He's almost level 16 as well. So he's gonna have the level 3 Aghanim's buffed ultimate. And that's gonna spell trouble for K-. But look at this K-. With the BKBs, they're gonna go press the issue. They have the precision aura activated. Oh, look at the familiars. The tower is dropping down pretty damn low. Familiars. Getting slowly killed, one of them, nope, not taking out completely, Anchor Smash is there as well. They get at least one with Malam, and there's the re-summon coming out. And they're TPing back now as well, they did do quite a lot of damage still, I mean, down to quarter HP, even slightly less. But the Hex will come out for Puck soon enough, whereas what is Malam gonna go for next? Is he going for a Hex for himself? Does he go for a Refresher or Double Reaper side? Although it would take up quite a lot of mana, I mean Reaper Scythe level 3, 500 mana. So it's not that easy to go for that combination, especially if you don't have Arcane Boots. So we might wait for it, but Refresher, 4 Staff, Blink Tide is there for Akira, for House of Gamers. And Hawkeye still, main. he does quite a lot of damage just because Precision Aura gives you extra. 
But it's not that crazy, although Precision Order will get buffed up a little bit as he scales up level 3 into Marksmanship. So it's 59 damage now. But it, it's still not like, oh, bad, bad shit crazy, I'm gonna just kill everybody now with that extra 59 damage. Definitely not the case. I mean, Draw Ranger, he's all well and good with damage. At least the Dragon Knight isn't farming that well either. Or does he have the... Oh, he has the AC finish, so... Although he doesn't have a crazy amount of farm, his net worth is... Almost 2,000 lower than the Drows. I think his items are maybe a little bit more impactful than Draw Ranger. PKB, of course, was a necessity. So that I can completely understand. Ogre has picked up a gem now for Commander Minus as well. But 32 minutes, looking at the graphs. They are zeroed out. They went in the favor of House of Gamers at some point. Now back to zero, more or less, in net worth. XP, still about a 2,200 lead for Commander Minus. Also... Went past the zero line at one point. But neither team really wants to just force it. Although, if anybody, I guess House of Gamers should be the ones doing it. I mean, there's 3.7k gold on Necrophos, for God's sake. Plus, Agonim's ultimate, you would usually want to use it if you can. But K-, minus, they aren't giving too many opportunities. And House of Gamers, they're not even split pushing with IO plus one. They're just straight on five manning. Maybe they want to save the relocate for a defensive measure if need be, just relocate somebody back to base and come back 12 seconds later with that hero being on full HP. It might be that, but it's a tier 2 for tier 2. Who keeps on going? Who's gonna back off first? I guess the game of chicken was already won by Commander 5, but there's the blink ravage! Nice phase shift, gets the blink out, refresher orb activate, the BKB from Hawkeye, gonna get... Well, he can't TP out at least. He does die in the end anyway, and they're gonna get Kak Kakoni? Kikoni? So relocate successful, they have to bring all the heroes back, but suddenly E-Blade finished on Malam. E-freaking Blade. And although Reaper Scythe didn't get a kill onto the Gyrocopter, it slowed him down, stunned him up even through PKB. So that, that was perfect fine. Oh, they get the Bloodlust onto Pure Evil. Can he chase down Slash Strike? Never mind, they're gonna give up. Too high of a chance for just assistance to come. So, excellent fight for House of Gamers there. Of course, Ravage wasn't the greatest just because Puck, he didn't get hit. Plus, he popped the Refresher anyway, although he still has just enough for that Blink-Ravage combination. Maybe one Anchor Smash now as well after that. Arcane Boots are going to come off any time. So, we're going to have a little bit more to work with. Nice, House of Gamers are going to get another Tier 2, so that's the last Outer Tower. Both teams have managed to destroy every single outer tower and suddenly slash strike up to another 2.4k gold almost. He just finished the assault quiris, I swear he did. And of course the E-Blade, man, the E-Blade Necrophos. They don't even go for Roshan because it might be a little bit too risky. Maybe they're going to try to go for a wraparound, maybe just push out the lanes. And then go for Roshan as you know when you see Commander Minus being anywhere, just trying to deal with the creep waves. But Commander Minus, what do they do at the moment? They're not farming as fast as they would love to. They're not getting any progression on Chirocopter at all, almost, although still hitting for 220, which isn't bad at all. But Throw Ranger, he was hitting for 220, 13 minutes into the game. And if you can make use of just such a strong heavy hitter in that early on, you might have missed your opportunity. But they still have plus 60 damage on all the ranged heroes. They've smoked up, they want to go for something. Ravage, they don't have double one. It's only a single Ravage. Well, I say only a single Ravage, but that's pretty devastating as well. Familiar scouting things out, running into free enemy heroes. Can they get the jump though? Yes, Blink Dream Call catches free as well. The silence to follow. They get the stun, but there's the Ravage catches at least two, but the BKBs are activated on both the throw, as was the Chirocopter. But Slash Truck, he's just so damn tanky with the bonus armor. But now, as is finally getting focused down, he's gonna lose his life. Malam drops Rosal, Illusor catches him, and the moment. A moment. Oh, Yule Scepter up. They need only such little extra cast comes through. And Akira, they only want to survive. That was the perfect fight. The perfect opening for uh, Commander Minus. And they found it. And this is easy Roshan. Unless there are multiple buybacks. Double Ravage might have made a slight difference. But the BKBs, they had high enough durations anyway, I think. For them to be able to win the fight like that. Just beautiful, beautiful stuff. She's on the ground as well. Insolent picks up the ages. It's level 18, almost 3.8k in the bank. Can go for maybe butterfly, maybe try to tank up. I don't know. I guess you can just go for some damage like monkey king bar as well if you need to. Daedalus maybe. 
We'll see what he wants to go for. I guess you can always just go Heart of the Rask. Although maybe you want to get a little bit more damage or just some agility at the very least. Eye of, no, Eye of Skadia would be just silly with having Frost Arrows already. But you can go for Manta style, I guess. There's not too much to remove of House of Gamers though. So maybe just go pure damage like Monkey King Bar. There's no avoidance, no dodge coming out yet. Slash Strike though, might go for that Heaven's Albert next if he wishes to do so. Definitely wouldn't be a bad item. But after the last fight, the graphs once again will BAM! Down they go. Only a like 1300 gold lead or net worth lead for command uh, minus. XP though, nearing 6, almost 7000 already. Hawkeye is going for the Monkey King bar it looks like. Demon Age picked up first, pure evil, holding out to the cheese, might be going for an AC of his own. If they get the AC as well, they're gonna do a crazy amount of damage really with their heroes. And Hawkeye, there is the homing missile onto Akira, can he blink out before any damage is taken, four step forward. They need something and do they have the Ravage? They have with the refresher if they really need to slash their corner gets stunned up insolent throw ranger. He has the ages, he doesn't care all that much. There's a beautiful dream coil with the cooldown, catching free. Kikoni gets the one kill, gonna go for the second as well, Malam, not enough with the E-Blade, cannot save himself or his teammates, another excellent fight, stun onto Akira as well a moment, gets the TP out, but, well, Akira not as lucky, another 4-4-0 fight, how the hell does K- take this, of course this time around, there wasn't a single Ravage, he didn't want to pop Refresher and then Ravage, when Ravage was off cooldown for another like 20 seconds at the time, I think, but maybe you should have, I, I'm, that was just... They didn't even need PKB and Draw Rangers just because, well, he had the ages anyway. Gyrocopter had to pop his. But suddenly they're threatening high ground and looking at the buyback status. They do have it on three heroes. Tide does not have it and neither does the Witch Doctor. So this might be tier 3. Not too sure if they can get the entire racks, but it's scary nonetheless. I mean, House of Gamers, they got completely caught off guard and they didn't minimize their casualties. They should have let the Tide Hunter to die and back off with the rest of them, I think. So that's one racks down. Are they gonna get another one as well? Just familiar is doing a crazy amount of damage. Precision Aura does end now. But the damage is already done. They're gonna get another set of racks. Just because Tidehunter, he doesn't have buyback. They have to thank... Can they get the third melee racks as well? Are you kidding me? Hawkeye pops the BKB just not to get stunned up. Just to be on the safe side. Call down. Gonna slow down too as well. The supports. And there's just gonna TP out. And in the meantime, Visage well with his familiars. Gets the melee racks bottom lane. Even if he dies... It's completely acceptable and well, he even makes it out. Maybe the familiars will be fed, so 300 gold might be lost. Anchor smash, one right click, need a little bit more. Four step forward, gets the second as well. But they don't care, Radiant mid racks go down to Kikoni helping out. And that means there's only one range rex. Just separating super sized mega creeps and house of gamers. Kikoni even gonna make it out just... Keeps on jolting and blinking. Has the Shiva's card now finished. Didn't go for a straight Hex. Just went for sh back to Shiva's card. But he has enough gold for Hex soon enough anyway. And so far... Commander Minus. They have buyback on everybody. House of Gamers. They can make it so that one hero doesn't have buyback of course. With the Aghanim Scepter. But man... Uh, Necrophos. Not too sure if the E-Blade was the correct decision here. It's nice to make sure that the right clicks can't hit you or a teammate. Whoever you want to use it on. But E-Blade is... You, they don't have the craziest magic damage to follow that up. And now AC finished on the Vicious as well. And he still has enough gold for buyback. That's crazy farm. He summoned the familiars once again. Oh, there's the Blink Ravage. But the BKB comes out from both of the targets. There's the Silence cooldown. Will connect onto Malam. Can they get the kill? E-Blade it up. Ghost Scepter as well. There's the second Ravage. Connects on almost anybody but the Draw Ranger. But Slash Track, he's going to lose his life, Malam. He was already down. And good game. Well played comes out. Commando Minus, a team qu that qualified yesterday. Of course, House of Gamers came from the qualifiers as well, but... Man, Commando Minus, I have to say, I haven't seen them before, but I am impressed. Just extremely well played. So, they take the series 2-0. We're gonna have Commando Minus versus Lions coming out next. I think it's gonna start probably almost immediately. Maybe like 5, maximum 10 minutes break for Commando Minus if they need to take it. But, thank you so much guys for tuning in, supporting us, as well as supporting the tournament. If you want the Meepo... You can always purchase the ticket, although I don't think the ticket is in the game yet because Valve hasn't updated it. But you can still just support the sponsors by checking their websites. It's Steel Series, Petal, uh, Hitbox, as well as oh god, 
No, oh, it's some tech. Completely forgetting it. We know tech, right? Forgot it for a second, but guys, you can always follow Hefla TV as well if you enjoy the cast. It's uh, Twitter and Facebook. Both of them are Hefla TV. And for myself, it's at Coucher, but for now, we're just going to head into game number two's lobby. So, yep, that's it for this series. K minus win it 2 0. Gonna see you for K Commander minus versus Lions next.